We've all learned that we eat food to get enough energy for our daily activities. But have you ever wondered how did our bodies turn food we eat into useful substances? How many of you think that is digestion using our stomach? It's actually way more complex than that. There are five steps that make up the digestive process. Kicking off with ingestion, where you intake food through your mouth, followed by digestion, where food molecules are broken down into small and useful substances. The third step is absorption, where the substances are absorbed into your bloodstream and utilized through the fourth step, assimilation. Lastly, the undigested and waste products will be expelled out of the body through the fifth step, ejection. Does this seem to be a little bit too much for you right now? No worries, we're going to go through the digestive process step by step together in this video, seeing how different organs in the digestive system work together to finish the process effectively and efficiently. So, by the end of the video, you should be able to describe all five stages of the digestive process, rows of different organs involved, and locate which food substances, like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are being digested and absorbed in which organ. Let's first take a look at the organs involved, known as the digestive system. Starting from the mouth to esophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, small intestine, and the large intestine, ending at the anus. The organs are interconnected for the food to pass along, known as the alimentary canal. The first step of the digestive process is ingestion, which is the stage where we intake food into the alimentary canal through our mouth. In this stage, food is physically broken down into smaller pieces by your teeth for easier swallowing. So, are we moving on to the second stage, digestion in the stomach now? Yes to the second stage, but no, not in the stomach. Digestion actually starts in the mouth cavity. For instance, the chewing action we mentioned in the ingestion process also acts as a type of mechanical digestion. By breaking down food into smaller pieces, it increases the surface area for digestive enzymes to work on later. While the presence of enzyme, and amylase, in the mouth cavity chemically digests starch into maltose, which is a simpler form of sugar. After that, the ball of food, known as bolus, then travels down the esophagus into the stomach, where digestion continues. In the stomach, there are glands that secrete gastric juice, containing another kind of enzyme, pepsin, which digests proteins into peptides. The gastric juice also contains hydrochloric acid, which provides an acidic environment for the enzyme pepsin to work in. The acid also helps to kill the bacteria present. Except chemical digestion, the churning action of the stomach, as shown here, also acts as a kind of mechanical digestion by mixing the food with the digestive juice. The mixture of food, known as chyme, is then transported from the stomach to the small intestine for further digestion. And there are three juices secreted along the way to facilitate that, with the first one as bile, secreted in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Bile emulsifies fats into smaller oil droplets, so that there is more surface area for enzymes to work on later. The second juice is pancreatic juice, secreted by the pancreas, and contains various enzymes that digest carbohydrates, fats, and proteins respectively. The last one is intestinal juice, secreted by the wall of the small intestine. It contains enzymes that can digest carbohydrates and proteins only. No fats is being digested by the intestinal juice. Here's a quick summary on substances that are digested in the different parts of the system. In the mouth cavity, carbohydrates is first digested, from the form of starch to maltose. After that, the bolus, which is the ball of food, is then passed down through the esophagus to the stomach, where proteins are digested into peptides. Then, the mixture of food chyme is transported to the small intestine. With the help of the three digestive juices mentioned, all food substances are digested into their simplest forms, glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids, which are ready to be absorbed. Moving on to the third step, absorption, where digested substances are absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to all parts of the body. 
and the absorption process mainly takes place in the small intestine, with a smaller portion of water and minerals being absorbed in the large intestine. Let's take a look at how the structure of the small intestine facilitates effective absorption. Firstly, the small intestine itself is very long and highly coiled. Inside the intestine, its lumen is covered with a large number of villi, a structure that is specialized in absorption. Both of these features together provide a very large surface area for absorption to take place. Let's take a closer look in how these finger-like projections villi facilitate absorption. First, the villi wall is only one cell thick, which is very thin. Inside each villus, there is a dense network of capillaries so that food substances like glucose and amino acids can be rapidly absorbed and transported by the bloodstream. What about the fatty acids? Unlike glucose and amino acids, fatty acid is larger in size and cannot enter the capillaries directly. Thus, it's absorbed through a structure called lacteal, which is essentially a lymphatic vessel connecting to the lymphatic system. Do note that this is only a pathway for absorbing fatty acids. The lymphatic system is connected to the blood circulation, thus the fatty acids will eventually be transported to the bloodstream, just like the other food substances. So what happened after absorption? Assimilation, where the digested and absorbed substances are used by the whole body accordingly. They are, as mentioned, transported from the small intestine to all parts of the body by blood circulation. Do you still remember the usage of these substances in your body? Let's take a quick look together. Glucose, the major energy source of your body, by metabolizing it through respiration to provide energy for your daily activities where amino acids act as the basic bleeding blocks of our body. A large proportion of our cells and muscles are made up of amino acids. They are responsible for the growth and repair of our body. As for fatty acids, it's one of the major components of cell membrane. Remember the phospholipids by layer taught in the chapter 2? It also acts as the energy reserve for your body. What's remaining then? The indigestible food together with the remaining water and minerals that are yet to be absorbed is now transported to the large intestine. Here, the absorption of water and minerals continue, while the indigestible food and other waste products will be excreted out of the body as feces, which is essentially the last step of the digestive process, ejection. So that wraps up our introduction on the digestive process. Do you think you can now achieve the objectives we set earlier in the video? Let's take a quick check. So do you still remember in which organ does digestion of proteins take place? Take a few seconds to think about it. If you really don't remember, go back to the previous sections to take a quick look. So, the answers, the stomach and the small intestine. Remember, the pancreas only secretes enzymes, the proteases, which aid the digestion of proteins in the small intestine. But digestion itself does not take place in the pancreas. So coming up to the next question, what are the structures as shown in this picture? And what is or are their roles in the digestive process? Again, take your time and feel free to go back to check your notes or the video itself to find the answer. Alright, so here comes the answers. These are villi present in the small intestine which are responsible for absorption. Still remember how glucose and amino acids are absorbed through the capillaries here? With fatty acids through the lacteal. Together with the large amount of them present in the small intestine, providing such a large surface area, and their one cell thick wall, they help make the whole absorption process quick and efficient. Coming to the end of the video, hope you have enjoyed this journey through the human digestive process. Questions are always welcome and feel free to contact us through the info down below. See you!